Mr. Teru, in this video, I want to talk about the six rules for finding derivatives of trig functions and memorizing them. Uh, through your study of calculus, I'm sure you're going to be, like my students, given a long list of rules for finding derivatives, and ultimately uh, we'll be talking about integration fairly soon, that you'll have to memorize uh, to be successful on your tests, and certainly if you're going to take the AP exam as well. And I'm you know, quizzing my students right now on their memorization of the six trig rules for finding derivatives. And they're doing fine, but I'm a little bit worried at the end of the year when they have a whole list of rules to have memorized, you know, what happens when the nerves get to you on the test? And you think, okay, well, I know the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x, assuming we're not, you know, needing the chain rule. And you get to a problem and you have to find, let's say, the derivative of tangents with respect to x. So the derivative with respect to x of the tangent of x. Well, right now we're, we're just talking doing, and doing a lot of work with, uh, again, these derivatives of these, with these trig functions, and we know right away that that is equal to secant squared x. But, okay, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit farther down the, the road in the class, maybe a couple months down the road, we're doing a lot of other things, and we get to a problem and we're just not quite sure, was that secant squared or was it cosecant squared or something else? Well, kind of like when we did our trig proofs in pre-calculus, Sometimes we just need to go back to the parent functions. You know, our sine and cosine functions basically build the other four trig functions. So I can rewrite this as the derivative with respect to x of sine of x over cosine of x. And then, you know, walk through or go through the quotient rule of finding this derivative. And that's going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, and the derivative of sine is cosine minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be derivative of cosine uh, with respect to x of cosine of x is negative sine x. All over the denominator squared, which you can write as cosine x squared, or you can write cosine squared of x. Either way you write that, you know, it's equivalent statements. Though I am finding that my students are remembering the chain rule, working through the chain rule more accurately when they write cosine squared of x with that power of 2 on the outside. At any rate, cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Negative times negative is positive. And then that's over again that denominator of cosine squared x. Now, sine squared plus cosine squared, that's one of, our, uh, one of our three Pythagorean identities for our trig functions, and that's equal to 1. And 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. And OK, yes. Obviously, a lot quicker if you just remember that the derivative with respect to x of the tangent of x is secant squared x. But, you know, sometimes our nerves get to us on our tests, and there's plenty of other things we have to have memorized. If that slips your mind, you can, you know, again, write, it, write your uh, tangent function in terms of sine and cosine. Go through the quotient rule and double check that uh, your memory serves you right, and the derivative, again, of tangent is secant squared x. And of course, we can do that same kind of work through the cotangent function. But uh, I'm not going to show you that again, right? It's just going to be the quotient rule again. How about if you need to find the derivative with respect to x of, whoops, not equals to, but of secant of x. I don't know why I'm wrapping this in parentheses. I don't really need that there. But um, actually, I do often like to wrap the angle that the trig function is being applied to in parentheses. So either way, derivative with respect to x of secant of x. Well, do we remember what that is? If not, we can rewrite this as 1 over cosine. So the derivative with respect to x of 1 over cosine of x. And we can use the quotient rule again to find the derivative of this. Or we can write it uh, with a uh, bring the cosine out of the denominator, write it with an exponent of negative 1. So the derivative with respect to x of cosine of x to the negative 1. And now I am, again, I'm, wrap, I'm bringing that cosine up out of the denominator, and I'm just going to wrap the entire cosine 
uh, function in parentheses and put the negative one out front because I see my students, you know, finding that again they use the chain rule more correctly when they wrap the trig function in a whole, you know, the whole trig function in a set of parentheses. And, and I can write this as, you know, cosine to the negative one of x, but again, learning from how my students are seeing this. And it kind of looks like maybe you can even wrap that in a set of parentheses as well if it's bothering you know that we're finding the derivative with respect to x of all of this, and then the cosine has that exponent of negative one. And now I'm just going to use the general power rule or the chain rule to work this problem out. So we have bring the exponent down, negative cosine of x, and of course when I'm doing the general power rule, I bring this exponent down, and I can write just a negative sign, or you can write negative one here. Reduce the exponent by one, and now we're going to multiply by the derivative, again with respect to x, of the inside function. See, the cosine of x is the inside function of this power of negative one. So, uh, you know, times the derivative of cosine of x, that inside function. Okay, well now this is going to become a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this cosine of x to the negative 2, or this cosine of the negative 2 power x, and bring it to the denominator. And we're going to just go ahead and leave this negative up here for, uh, for a second. That might very well cancel out, maybe. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And indeed, we have a negative coming in. Again, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, and we have a negative out here in the beginning of the problem, and those are going to cancel out, and now we have sine over cosine squared. Well, that doesn't seem to remember uh, what I remember the derivative uh, with respect to x of secant of x is, so let's write it like this. Ah, okay, so we have uh, sine over cosine is equal to tangent, and <clears throat> if I show this multiplication of 1 up here, we have 1 over cosine is equal to secant. So, if you had forgotten, the derivative with respect to x of secant of x is equal to uh, secant x tangent x, or tangent x times secant x, however it's written in your, your textbook. And again, this is longer than it would have taken if you just had memorized that, but if you forget, if you're not quite sure, go into terms of sine or cosine in this, in this uh, particular uh, problem. Uh, walk through the derivative process. In this case, again, I wrote that with a negative exponent, went through the general power rule, the chain rule, and got our final answer and derived the derivative rule uh, on my own. And you can do this with the other two trig functions. I'm going to go ahead and step off now. I'm going to show you those two other... Uh, derivative rules just for the heck of it, we'll call this video done. And here are your six rules for finding derivatives of trig functions. And by the way, if you're going to go through the trouble of memorizing them and, you know, if need be, uh, deriving your own rules, <laughs> make sure you copy your answer down correctly. I did eventually catch the fact that I forgot that was secant squared and just wrote secant. So, I'm Mr. Troop. Out of your homework.